Vice President Kamala Harris's husband is on a mission to stomp out toxic masculinity. Now, in an interview, Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff said he will use his platform to speak out against it whenever he can. There's too much of toxicity, it's masculine toxicity out there, and we've kind of confused what it means to be a man, what it means to be masculine, where you've got this trope out there that you've got to be tough and, you know, angry and, and lash out to be strong. I just, just the opposite. Yeah, following a legacy, Tommy, of multiple second spouses, commitments to uh, children primarily, right. it's great to see now toxic masculinity being on the top of his agenda. <laughs> I'm so tired of the identity politics. First of all, I'll say that. But from the party that doesn't know what a woman is, I really don't want them to define <laughs> toxic masculinity. And what he said in that clip, men just think they have to be manly. I don't know about you. I like men that are manly. I'm sorry. Is that controversial to say now in 2023? I don't really care. We want men to be manly. We want men to be providers. We want men to have a firm spine and a backbone. That's OK. That's not toxic masculinity. If you're a jerk and you're a loser, that's toxic, no matter if you're feminine or masculine or somewhere in so between. Yeah. But the fact that we've got this war on masculinity is part of the reason we have such a culture problem in the United States of America as it is, because young people don't know what they're supposed to be, they don't know what they are, and they're confused. And then we're left with this. By the way, I'll also mention, very few people know who the second gentleman is, maybe because this is his agenda. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we had to identify him as Kamala Harris's husband, Kaylee. And yes. you know, to that point, in the millions of things that could bridge gaps, that could bridge divides, that could help Americans, uh, he chose this one? It, that's right. You know, Jesse Waters said it best. There's a toxic train crash over in East Palestine, but we're focusing on toxic max masculinity. It's perfectly said. Ooh. What did they choose to focus on? Pushing sexual literature to K through three education, eliminating women's sports by allowing biological men to compete, parental secrecy policies so you can transition genders and not tell your children, critical race theory, insidious ideology among our kids. This is what they focus on, and they think it's winning. So keep it up. You know, President Biden's trying to change his views on crime, uh, but keep up with this. Yeah. And even if you look at, I mean, as, as Tommy mentioned, there's been a war on masculinity going back decades. And if you look at the way men are portrayed, even on mo movies and TVs these days, always kind of weak, um, uh, very oftentimes they're just so incompetent. You know, but, but we actually, so a lot of young men aren't even seeing an example. And so I was thinking, you know, my wife is pregnant now. With two weeks, my baby boy will be here. Yay! And I'm very excited Yay! about it. Um, and I just think about, I'm going to raise my son in those same traditional values, that masculine, that masculinity that my father taught me. And there's nothing that, you know, Doug Imhoff or any, any uh, progressive can do about it. So we have to raise our sons to know what real, and I call it godly masculinity, doing the right thing, Amen. standing up, mm -hmm. uh, and, and standing up for the, for the least of these, um, and, and doing the right thing. And so, anyway, I think it's one of those things that we're going to have to apply pressure in the home to have right standing good men um, because we're not going to get it in culture today. You're a great dad. <laughs> wow, you have two weeks to practice. Two, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a girl dad now. I'm I'll am i have a, a girl and a boy. So this will be fun. Oh, okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank to you. you. That's wonderful. You know, just real quickly, um, yeah, find a cause. Feed some children. Mm -hmm. Help some people. Mm -hmm. Foster care, social work. Those things need a lot of spotlight right now. Give your voice. My mom is a social worker, so I know. Give your voice, give your platform, Doug Imhoff. I don't know why we want to be drawn the same. We're wiping away the lines that separate us. And that, to me, really is confusing. Because if you're strong and you believe in what you believe, why should it matter whether or not I'm ultra-feminine or you're ultra-masculine? Why does that matter to anybody else? Yeah. I don't want to know that about them. They can live however they want to live. Right. But they don't get to dictate how I live or how you live. Right. That's exactly right. I mean, we're, we're going to raise our children the way we want to, and we're going to and we're going to do it in a way that's respectful of other people. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Just one more disappointment coming out of that second family. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.